Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chats with Children. I hope you are safe and well. Now, last week, you may know that SLAS ran in Boston. And unfortunately, mm. I wasn't able to be there in person. However, I've got the next best thing, because I've got Vicky Luisi, who is CEO of SLAS. And she's going to give us an overview of how the event went last week. So, Vicky, first of all, it's lovely to see you again. How are you? It's lovely to see you as well. I'm very, very well. Thank you. And what's the weather like in Chicago today? Because I'm guessing you're still in Chicago at the moment. I am back in Chicago. Yes. Um, so it's a it's a wee bit chilly today. It's it's only a um, you know in the the high 20s here, um, but we're expecting 50s by the middle of the week. Oh, fantastic! So fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes, I'll have all my toes crossed as well for you. And uh, <laughs> as you'll see, I've got some uh, baseball jerseys behind me, and I've just found out prior mm -hmm. to this uh, recording that actually Vicky's a White Sox fan, so at least mm -hmm. I got half of it right there by putting it out. So anyway, now, Vicky, before we start talking about last week's event, for those people not familiar with SLES, would you mind giving us a very quick overview of the organization and what you do? Absolutely. Uh, so SLES is the Society for Laboratory Automation and Screening. We have members, we have about 18,000 members from around the world, uh, predominantly in North America and Europe. And our members are those folks who are working in life science research labs, um, developing automation systems, using those automation systems, and uh, bringing about some pretty interesting discoveries for the world. Fantastic. So let's talk about last week's event, because I know if you look at events in general across life science, particularly uh, since the pandemic started, first of all, they were postponed or went digital mm -hmm. and then i know even this month and next month some big events have actually moved now you were brave enough to actually still keep the event live <laughs> as well as having the virtual element i should add mm -hmm. uh, so how was the show i mean i know it's difficult because you haven't got the audience numbers yet but how many people actually were there how many i mean i know you had about 300 exhibitors but how many um, visitors did you get at the show yeah so in a word the event was fantastic I'm glad um, to hear it. we were you know it exceeded everybody's expectations including mine and those of the board and the professional team uh you know typically we have somewhere around six thousand or so attendees at our international conference um we were for obvious reasons expecting to not see that number this year we were expecting to be down by about 30 percent well we blew the top off of that um so these are unaudited figures sure. but i can tell you that we had nearly 5300 people who had registered for the event we were right at 5278 individuals with about 10 percent of that being online um it, it was it was just nothing short of spectacular to see all the people just coming back. And I know we heard this time and time again from the exhibitors, from the podium presenters, from those who were attending that this was far more than anybody was expecting, but also was just some of the best interactions they've had at an event in a very long time. I'm very jealous of you here. You said that. I've got to say <laughs> because I really wish I'd been there. But anyway, so so what were some of the highlights? I know you had quite a lot of things going on last week in Boston, didn't you? I mean, you had poster yeah. event, you had sort of new products for innovation and lots of things. So, so can you give viewers a feel for what sort of things happened last week? Absolutely. You know, we had so there was there were still all of the awards that we offer, and you can find the information on the on these and the awardees on our website, but the new product awards were given out. Um, the innovation award was given out. The uh, Ignite award to the best company in Innovation Avenue was given out, but probably the most exciting thing that, was, that we talked about or we announced, I should say last week, was SLAS has teamed up with Nobiche, which is the National Organization of Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers. And we have uh, together, announced that we are going to be offering or giving out actually two $50,000 scholarships to high school students of color who want to pursue a STEM degree um, at the undergraduate level. We made this big announcement on the first day of conference. Um, the application process is open now. And again, you can find that information on our website. But this is something that has been nearly two years in the making. Um, you know, after George Floyd was murdered, 
we at SLAS realized that we really needed to do something that moved the needle when it came to bringing about equity, um, especially in the STEM field. And so we felt the best way to do that was to try and help get more students of color into STEM fields. Um, so we're very fortunate that these first two scholarships have been supported by Pfizer and Amgen. And uh, we're hoping that there will be other companies out there who are willing to also do the same. And, and we can take this far beyond two scholarships a year. That's fantastic. What a great initiative. And if people do want to get involved, though, how can they get more information about that? So you can find information on the SLAS website, slas.org go under the awards section of the website and there, uh, there, the information about the scholarship is there as well as the application. Um, application, like I said, are open now. Um, the first round of submissions is going to be due in May um, when we'll do kind of a first pass on those and bring it down to a smaller group of finalists. Those finalists will then work with mentors from um, the lab automation or screening field or life science research field and those mentors will help them refine their projects throughout the summer. And then the final winners will be selected at the end of August and announced at the Nobuche Annual Conference in September in Orlando. Brilliant. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that as the year progresses. Um, so I know you had, I mean, SLS is all about obviously innovation and you had, I was just looking at the website, over a hundred companies showcase new products. Mm -hmm. at the event so from your experience i mean obviously sls is very much a conference and exhibition with the expo exhibition takes a big part of it because obviously with something like lab automation you have to physically see it to actually really see the benefits of the automation and so on um mm -hmm. so was there anything walking the floor that stood out for you i know it's very difficult because you don't want to sort of upset anybody but was there anything which stood out for you yeah, if i missing people out is there anything that stood out for you as you walked through the floor this week or last week i should say you know i will say what stood out for me the most was that every time i had the chance to walk the floor i saw that there was interaction going on in all the booths even if it was just one person there talking, I didn't. I never saw in any of our exhibitors who didn't have an opportunity to interact with an attendee. You know, nobody was bored. Nobody was sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Everybody was really interested and engaged with all of the companies. And that goes for big, medium, or small. Um, I can also tell you, generally speaking, we saw more small companies registered for this event that we have ever had before. And a kind of parallel to that, um, more people who we classify as early career registered for the event than we've ever had before. Um, no doubt this was very much due to being in Boston, um, where there, Boston is, is sort of that super hub of small companies and those small companies um, much more likely to send their early career professionals out to conferences. So uh, it was, it, there was a, an energy that was going on no matter where you were in, in the conference um, that I just haven't seen before. And certainly some of it is for all of us coming out of the pandemic and sort of being set free to be face-to-face -face again. Um, but I, I also think that, there, that the scientific community is ready to be back. That's most definitely what I saw last week. Do you think, was I interviewed someone um, last week who said to me one of their predictions going forward for 2022 was that with the big resignation, a lot of people now to try and get work-life balance are now looking to work for startups and smaller companies. And that's particularly true maybe in life science. Do you think that's a trend yourself that you've seen that more people are sort of going to work for startups and there are more startups within the life science field than there were previously? You know, I'll start with the end of that question. Um, the pandemic certainly brought about a surge in startups. And, and we had seen that happen before in other uh, sort of crisis situations where it just, um, a good crisis ends up being a great breeding ground for startup companies. And I have no doubt um, that that become, can become very attractive to those who maybe have been working in much larger companies um, multinationals, what have you. Um, obviously, you're not dealing with a bureaucracy. You have a little more flexibility. Um, those companies can 
can be a bit more nimble. They also don't have the same resources. So there, there is always that drawback. Sure. Um, but I don't have any hard and fast data around seeing that kind of a shift, but it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Right. Now, looking ahead, obviously, this was um, obviously in Boston, and this was your main event. Um, what can we expect to see from SLES for the rest of this year? Well, we are uh, well underway in getting our Europe conference rolling. Registration for that is open. That event is May 24th through the 27th in Dublin. We're also accepting abstracts for that event right now. So again, go to slas.org, click on events, and click on the Europe conference to learn more about that. We have two symposia coming up this spring very soon. Um, our Europe Sample Management Symposia Symposium will be at the end of March in Berlin. And then we will be doing a um, building biology in 3D at the Broad Institute at the end of April. So strongly encourage everybody to take a look at those. Um, as, a, as of right now, all of those events are scheduled to be in-person only, but we are keeping really close tabs on folks' ability to travel and whether or not companies are um, lifting restrictions, countries lifting restrictions, what have you. And if it looks like some of those restrictions are still in place such that a significant portion of the audiences won't be able to travel to those events, we will add a virtual component to them. Right. Well, that actually leads me to one question I've got to ask you about the Boston event. You obviously had a virtual component to that as well. Mm -hmm. So you said about 10% of those registered sign up for the virtual only event but obviously everyone who could attend live could also attend virtually as well if they wanted to how mm -hmm. how long is that virtual uh component live or is it no longer available to those people who register for the event it it is available thank you for asking um and so anybody who attended slas 2022 whether it was in person or virtual can access the content through the end of february so that is living right now on the SLAS website under the SLAS 2022 section. Um, and you can go back and relive. Um, you can go back and listen to talks may maybe that you missed the first time around. Uh, but that is all there and easily accessible for anyone who is registered. Right. And you mentioned that obviously going forward, the symposium are planned to be live only. And depending on what the situation, they may have a virtual element or not. Is that the same then for the European event as well that will only mm -hmm. be live or are you running concurrently with that a virtual element to it regardless at the moment it is live only but again we'll keep close tabs on that and if we feel we need to add a virtual component to it we most certainly will and i, I must ask you so when is lss slas 2023 because obviously you're already starting thinking about next year I'm yes so sure. oh, for sure <laughs> and you've already got people rebooked for it so when is it and where is it next year so SLAS 2023 is February 28th through March 1st, and it, so it's a, about a month later than it normally is, and it's going to be back in San Diego. Um, we are now on a rotation between San Diego and Boston through 2029. All right, so that's easy for me to guess where you are then the year after that. That's okay. Is there any reason why yeah. it's, it's, been, uh, it's been put back a bit later next year than to what it is normally? It was really just a matter of when we were able to get space in San Diego. Right. Fantastic. Well, brilliant. Well, Vicky, it's been lovely to see you again. I wish I could have finally seen you in person. The last time I saw you in person was 2020 in San Diego. So hopefully we'll get to catch up at some point in person this year. All being well. Uh, but well I'd love you... to see you in Dublin. Well, I, you know what? I would love to be in Dublin as well. I've just got to work out my schedule because you have no idea how many events are running that week in, in <laughs> there are a lot of events running that week and i'm trying to sort out which ones i should go to but i'd love to be at a, in dublin I mean, actually i think dublin is again like boston a great venue because it is a hub for europe in terms of the biopharma and pharma market life science industry so hopefully yeah. you'll have a lot of people attending that because it is such a great uh, location for any live event in Europe for for farmer, so mm -hmm. um, no, I'd love to see you there. But I wish you lots of success in all the symposiums and the Dublin event, everything else you've got coming. Which you've got lots going on, I know this year. So I wish you lots of success, and also the new initiative that you just mentioned as well. I hope that goes really well. So there you go, Thank viewers. You. If you'd like to know more about what SLS are doing this year, 
and about the initiatives Vicky talked about, the symposiums, the European event, and also SLS 2023 in San Diego, then you can go to sls.org and get loads of information. Then if you're not already a member, there's lots of information about becoming a member to mm -hmm. SLS as well. So all that's left me says, Vicky, as always, it's been lovely to see you. Have a fantastic year. And thank you viewers for watching. And until next time, as always, stay well and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.